I think primarily it's to be seen as an expert. So that might mean sticking your neck out there and commenting on the issues of the day. Business of Architecture UK, episode 14. Hello and welcome Architect Nation. This is the podcast for architects where you'll discover tips, strategies and secrets for running an impactful and profitable design practice. Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan Willard and I am the host of the Business of Architecture UK. And today I'm speaking with architectural PR specialist Robert Fien, who works for Robert Fien PR. And he's had over 10 years experience working in the field of architecture, focusing specifically on the public relations element where he's been helping practices to communicate both internally and externally to the outside world through their media, publications and events. Um, Rob's developed a wide array of specialist expertise in areas such as copywriting, editing and publishing. Um, Before setting up Robert Fien PR, uh, Rob worked for the bespoke design PR agency uh, Caro Communications as an account director where he worked with small and large practices. Um, He also worked on key events like the London Festival of Architecture, New London Architecture and the World Architecture Festival. Um, And before that, Rob was actually working at Roger Sturck Harbours and Partner um, where he was the media client coordinator working on the launch of a number of really high profile projects such as number one Hyde Park in Knightsbridge next to the Mandarin, um, Neo Bankside next door to the Tate in Southwark uh, and Las Arenas which is a conversion of a bull ring in Barcelona. Rob was also heavily involved and instrumental in the promotion of the Richard Rogers exhibition at the RA a few years ago called Inside Out and prior to that Rob was working at Fiden in publishing. So in this interview it's a really fantastic set of knowledge and expertise that Rob breaks down here and he goes into a lot of detail about some of the fundamentals of PR for small practices and how small practices can implement and design their own PR strategies themselves. So enjoy this episode. Good morning and welcome. Ryan Willard here with the Business of Architecture and I'm here with my good friend Robert Fine. Robert Fien, apologies, who is a PR specialist in the architectural world. And uh, we're going to be talking this morning about how small firms, small practices can be utilizing PR principles and what the PR fundamentals are and how to gain promotion for your projects. So, first of all, what would you say are some of the fundamentals of PR for small practices? Yeah, so I, what I thought we could talk about today was a little bit of sort of PR DIY. So, in essence, just coming up with some top tips for how to get started. Yeah. Because I think a lot of small practices don't know where even to begin. Um, and it's quite terrifying. And you can get some help from the likes of me. But uh, also you can do it yourself. And some people are really good at it on their own. But mm. they learn through mistakes. Um, so personally, I think most PR for architecture practices starts with the work itself, with projects. We could talk endlessly about profile building, uh, thought leadership, events, writing, um, you know, blogging, podcasts. There, there's an you know, TV. There's an endless amount of PR you could do as an architect. But ultimately, start off simple. It's the work. That's what you want to promote because it says something about your practice. Hopefully, Mm. that uh, you want to convey to a general audience and you know it might be uh, that audience might include your peers it might be the general public potential clients all sorts of people what would what would you what would you explain PR as like what's the purpose of it like as a really sort of basic question yeah so break it down PR stands for public relations right so it's all those relations with anyone outside of your company Uh, so as I said, that 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 can be a, a range of different people, and often you want to target it, depending on what you want to get out of it. Right. But ultimately, you are communicating yourself. Right. 
and with the intention of communicating a particular kind of message or yeah yeah and i mean i mean i'm going to talk about project pr today but it's fundamentally important for you to work out who you are as a practice mm. before you start trying to tell people and that might sound obvious but a lot of people start pr and then realize afterwards they haven't clearly articulated w what the practice is and what it does and right that can be a bit of an issue because it's the first thing that someone's going to ask and be like oh lovely project but i don't really understand what do you do and you think oh right I probably okay. should have said that right so it needs to be in the kind of a bigger a bigger context of like a company vision and yeah overall is it would you call pr a piece of the marketing systems that are involved in a practice or definitely definitely a pr is technically subservient to marketing right so if you think about um you've got your business strategies and then marketing is a part of your business strategy getting people to know about you and then um pr is a subsection of that which is directly communicating to people but it's pr is not websites or necessarily newsletters or you know brochures it's definitely much more about specific stories right got it okay cool so do you want to give us the, those kind of fundamentals then like how for for a project yeah so you've got a project first of all what is the basic story and uh i'm not just talking about completions here because you can pr a project at multiple stages uh in its in its gestation so ah oh, that's that's good to know because that'd be one of the, my first questions would be like well what if you've got no completed projects yeah and i think a lot of people just sit on things for years and as, you, as we all know architecture takes a really really long time so if you're constantly just waiting for completions you, you're not getting any pr for the practice which might be a bad thing because then people don't know about you and mm. if they don't know about you they can't hire you so depending on the size of the scheme you might do an appointment uh, press release to announce that you've got the job uh, that tends to be on larger projects uh, and it's something that your client uh, might be really interested in because it won't necessarily involve any visuals you might not have done any design work at all but if you've beaten some other architects to the job you've won a competition or it's just a really interesting site or project you might want to say you know this team and involve your collaborators as well. This team has been appointed and that's that kind of story would most likely be picked up by the sort of trade architectural press. Um, it's not one for national yeah. newspaper coverage. Um, then there's also planning announcements. So if you're submitting a project for planning or you've achieved planning, which is even better, mm. uh, people might want to hear about it and then you've got renders to show and that's kind of that's kind of your big moment to say, watch this space. In a couple of years, this is going to be coming out of the ground. Right. And obviously, once you've made that announcement, all those renders will be, they can be added to your website and your marketing material because it's out there. So that could be applicable to any scale of project, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, people have done it for very, if you've got a very unusual house extension, mm. something quite wild, and if you've got a beautiful render... Um, people will pick up on it because it's it's inspirational. Mm. And then I'm just thinking about some of the other things. Um, you can also, obviously you can do uh, project completion and that is where it gets a bit more complicated because you've got to have, you want to prepare good photos, clean drawings, you want to make sure your client's happy with it going into the press because if they're a private owner, they might say, actually, I value my privacy and I'd rather not see this everywhere. Or you can do it, but please keep my name out of it. Yeah. You know, there. and then if it's a more commercial client, they might have their own PR plans, which doesn't mean you can't do anything. It just means you've got to work together because you'll be covering different titles and they might want to, you know, get into a newspaper to encourage sales or lettings and um, you might want to be recognized for your amazing design skills yeah 
Now, I've, I've seen that happen before where there's been a kind of a different marketing agenda, say, for the developers who are wanting to um, let out and sell various apartments and then the architects who have got perhaps a different slant on the scheme where it's much more about the public spaces or the public aspects of the of the building. Yeah, and there's definitely very different language yeah. used for the two. So uh, developers are, are using a sort of value per square meter kind of also, also sort of kind of sexy lifestyle language yeah whereas architects are talking much more about the benefits of design mm. and uh, so don't feel like you have to use your clients stuff uh, just think about what's relevant to the audience and who who is the audience well i mean i guess fundamentally to support your business it's potential clients yeah so again working with your client if they're promoting stuff that goes into the property press that's great for you so you want to make sure your name gets attached to it and you know you can just do that by saying hey i'd like to add a quote or don't forget us yeah because it can be very easy in the property side of things people just sort of forget to mention the architect but it's not deliberate it's just that it's not their primary goal to promote you mm. So you just have to sort of segue your way in there. Yeah, make sure that you've you've gotten a, a mention. Yeah, yeah, which is probably more valuable than even your own massive PR campaign is, is getting in front of other potential clients. And what are the mistakes that you commonly see small practices making with their PR? So overcomplicating the story, you know, delving way too much into the history and context and background of a project that stuff is interesting but it's people aren't going to read through paragraphs and paragraphs of site analysis and um where the design came from mm. you need to boil that stuff down and even or even position it after your main points which you know which are what are the project what problem does it solve what are the key design elements that um, that have, that have driven it and have su successfully created the final scheme. Mm. So, yeah, keeping it simple is definitely good. If you if you want to produce lots of written material, you can have that as a sort of appendix or ancillary stuff, which you know some journalists might say, oh, "I want I want to know more." But ultimately, a press release should be, you know, one page of text about the project and then you can have other pages for information about the practice and then if you're incorporating images that might stretch things a bit but ultimately it's a page worth of text is the maximum anyone's going to consume right and you want to be able to craft your press release how what are the sort of components to a good press release what an interesting question <laughs> so i've just been thinking about that um so i think I have a general structure that I work to with press releases and I think it should be easy for your listeners to follow. Uh, so first of all, a short paragraph on what the project is in its entirety. So like start with the conclusion. So kind of like, you know, this house is defined by uh, an amazing asymmetric um, extension made of Corten steel, which has enabled the family to double the size of their living space bang you know you can go back and go into the detail of that but you need you need to get it out there in the you know in the first paragraph mm. so people know what they're reading about and then they want to move on then uh i guess where it is and who it's for right because you know there's there's a big difference between a, a buffy in scotland to um a house extension uh, on top of an office in the middle of a city. You know, pe different people are going to be interested in those different typologies. Um, you, could, you could say who is the kind of client. So um, is it just a, a family, as mentioned before, or, you know, a big office company like WeWork? Um, because people want to, people will understand implicitly that those clients have different requirements. You can say what was the brief from the client because that explains a lot where the design started from. Uh, what did your design solve? Uh, 
and then really it's uh, maybe a quote from the architect and if possible a quote from a quote from the client because people are really interested to hear about what they think i mean it's going to be positive stuff yeah but the client will often reveal something in their quote that you haven't thought about as an architect because yes. they might say we love this scheme because you know um the net value was four times what we were expecting whereas you're thinking you know it's got really nice balconies that's quite that's quite interesting actually to have those conversations with clients to understand the language and what has been a benefit because sometimes like you say it's very easy for architects to overlook that completely and actually when you're communicating like the press ultimately your you know your probably prime target audience is potential new clients yeah. so being able to speak that language that they're speaking is kind of essential to ask questions get testimonials from existing clients to really because sometimes they say stuff which is so obvious that we overlook it yeah yeah and you know it, it's very easy to not be business minded about a project that you've poured your heart and soul into mm. and there's a key element that you're really proud of but i guess ultimately future clients aren't booking you for that key detail because they don't want exactly the same project they want a project that suits them uh, so ultimately it's about the bigger picture of what what you've delivered to a client and how pleased they are they're going to read that testimonial and say oh you know i think i could work with this guy if you know if my competitor or if my peer um thinks they're good it must be worth a go mm. and it's quite it's quite interesting as well so it goes on to some of the conversations that have been having on twitter in the last week or so about um what was it tom dykoff saying that architects are not the best at communicators best communicators and can often get mixed up into a world of very technical professional language and then there's lots of architects notably sam jacob saying how um you know actually it's, it's it's critical that architects have this technical language or professional language better to talk about our work um but it's also it's very much kind of like well you've got to know who you're speaking to exactly exactly and that's that's when you're drafting a text fundamentally you've got to think about who the audience is mm. and if it's a mixture of different people then you have to go down the route of clear mainstream text you know there's you can't hope to elevate people up to a certain level if they haven't had training so if you want to if you want to write something for architects which is totally useful because you know it's a good way to find employees um make new friends you know collaborators peer recognition often means your reputation spreads and some architects who can't do a job might recommend you to a client so there's nothing wrong with that right but unless you're speaking directly to architects for a specific reason i'd steer clear of the super technical language and just try and think about what a, a layman understands and i can't remember who it was but someone said that they found the best way to draft that kind of text was to imagine they were explaining a project to their dad in the pub. That's what they said. They said because they used to say all these crazy archa speak mm. to their dad and he'd stop them and be like, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Can you just break it down for me? So, yeah, I think clarity of message is really important. And But, you know, I agree with Sam that architects have to speak both languages. It is a... It is a a very technical profession and uh we don't want to dumb it down mm. we just want to try and make sure that the right people are understanding us at the right time yeah great so uh, just to kind of go into a bit of the detail about releasing uh yes. some uh like a, a, an article say i've got a, a finished project it's completed i've got my photographs done i've written a press release then what so again, think about, again, the project uh, story that we mentioned before mm -hmm. and uh, maybe the typology or the bigger picture. I think, right, who is interested in that? Right. So, if I'll, you know, let's, off, let's talk about some examples. If it's uh, uh, a house extension or a new house, you're looking at residential magazines or newspapers that have property sections in them they're going to be interested in that if it's an office there's no point sending it 
to a house magazine. That sounds obvious, but some architects just send everything to everyone. And the problem you might get with that is if you get a reputation for wasting people's time, they're not going to open your next email, even right. if it is relevant. So you've got to think who, you know, and look look around. If you're, if you're unsure, because some architects have said to me in the past, well, how, I'm not a PR guy. How could I know who to send it to? You know, use Google. Think, you know, just look up your peers' projects. If you've got, if there's a project that you've seen one of your peers publish, Google it, see where it's appeared and um, and you'll soon learn the appropriate titles and then go onto those websites and they usually have some contact details uh, on them and you can send it off and that's easy. And if it's an office, you might go to On Office magazine. Um, uh, if it's very interiors based, um, you know, there's FX, Frame, various interiors publications. So you just try and be realistic is mm. what I would say. Don't just think, I've spent years in this project so everyone wants to publish it. Because uh, if you waste people's time, it, it can go badly for you. And is it still an effective means of communicating like uh, through printed material? Or is it more online platforms nowadays? I suppose there's such a wide landscape of where you can, of different publications that you can approach. Yeah, it really depends on your perspective. Right. So m the majority of people love to be in print and it has certain benefits. You know, it brings a certain cachet. So... But then other people are very savvy and they realize that online has much better benefits. So if you think uh, your article is published in The Guardian, it's say in the newspaper because it ties to a bigger issue, like this this typology could solve the housing crisis, for instance. That, that title gets used a lot. So you're in The Guardian, you get uh, printed, you appear in the newspaper for one day and then it's gone. Not many people go back to newspapers, they chuck them in the bin. Right, and say the article doesn't go online ever for some bizarre reason. That's it. You had a moment you can say to everyone, "I was in the Guardian," but your your moment has been and gone in terms of readers just picking it up and casually reading it. You have an article go onto the website; it's there forever potentially. Yeah, you can you can link to it. You can post it on social media. Um, every time people Google search things, if it's been very popular, you know it will come up a lot. So pe you'll find people finding it years and years later mm. and saying to you, hey, I just saw this project that you did four years ago. Um, so it, it def online definitely has benefits. And I've had some international clients who have said, I'm really sorry, we got on the website, but we didn't get in the newspaper. And they were like, I don't, I don't read British newspapers, but I do go online. Yeah. So um, it, has, it has benefits, but then going back to printed there are some beautiful beautiful thick glorious magazines out there that people do keep or they do go onto hotel lobby tables where it's not even just the buyer who's reading the article um it's the casual browser and you can't underestimate that i mean i've had a lot of uh architecture clients find that they've been approached um uh, for other projects because someone has been browsing wallpaper or blueprint and they've they've gone wow that is a really beautiful project i need to ring this guy um and give them a, a job that might be totally different but they like the style mm. so they've all got benefits but um you know again you have to be realistic uh you know there's uh, i think some people underestimate the likes of design because they say, oh, it's an online publication. It should be easy to get into and it has less value. It's also one of the most popular design magazines in the world. Yeah. And they are very selective because they have, um, they have projects coming in from Chile, um, France, Australia, India, everywhere you can imagine. They've got projects coming straight to them. So, your beautiful side return in Islington might not might not be enough. Yeah. So I think you have to look look at what's being published, where you want it to be published, and see if see if it's got a chance. And then also see who wrote the, wrote the article, because the chances are, if someone likes doing articles about um, chapels, remote chapels, and you've got one of those, they might write about it again. Right. So it's not so when you write a press release you're sending that to a journalist for them to then write their own piece on the building. Yeah, and I think 
you need to think of the relationship between you and the journalist because you are in it together. So they want to write stories so that they earn their fee and do their job. Um, they also need to pitch your project to their editor traditionally. It's very, it's very rare that you go straight to the editor as an architect or as a PR. So you're in it together. They want to write about your project. You want them. You want the magazine to publish it. So you need to give them the tools to do it. So you need to give them the best photos uh, and the best short descriptions so they can very quickly say to their editor, what do you think of this? And a decision will be made very rapidly, mm. whether you like it or not, whether it's in or out. And I had an architect recently the other day say that they went to a whole ton of people at the same time and the least favourite on the list published first and then no one else wanted to touch it. So you've also got to be worried about the carpet bomb approach. Um, it would it makes sense if you have a if you have a few top tier titles that you'd really love to see it published in, have a chat with them first. And some of them, like the really glorious magazines, will say to you, you know, I'm afraid we want to publish this, but we're going to have to sit on it for three months. And so you know that and you can say, right, well, let's not send it to anyone else in that time. Right. Okay. So there is a kind of exclusivity with some of the projects. There can be. Yeah, there can be. Um, again, it depends a lot on the typology. Um, there are certain things that have a moment. So uh, if you've designed uh, an amazing exhibition, which has opened or a restaurant, there's a there's a there's a moment around that opening, and you've got to go for it. And just yeah. that's kind of like okay, send it to everyone. It's the one, yeah. yeah. Because if you if you write to someone to say, hey, this restaurant opened four months ago, would you like to publish it? They're likely to say, sorry, that's kind of old news. So you've got. I think you need to think what are they going to get out of it? Yeah. You know, are they writing a news story, but are they doing a, a more long term feature? Um, and also, you can target journalists on uh, for kind of a larger feature. So again, if you've come up with a, you've got an amazing hotel, which is changing the way that hotels are designed in the industry, you know, it's doing something new, they might write a larger piece about the future of hotel design. Ah, okay. So it might not just be on your project, it can open yeah. up other conversations. Yeah. So you need to lead with... What is the bigger picture? Right. So you could say, you know, is this, is um, our shared spaces in hotel lobbies the new office kind of thing? Yeah. You know, that has kind of been done, but I'm just trying to think of an example. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting as well to think, like, um, how you define, like, you know, what kind of processes would you say are useful for architects to determine what are the right publications to actually approach? I, th I think you've just got to you've got to look up what your competitors are doing. You know, there will be someone out there. You know, they might employ a PR agency who are really good at what they do, and just and just see where it is and who's writing about it. Mm. There's not there's nothing else. It's a quick bit of research, really. It's just and it's just going to stop you making a fool of yourself and writing to the wrong person. And so, would you suggest that that's quite a good thing for architects to do is to build up their own database of publications? Definitely, definitely. Um, also, as you establish relationships with people, um, if it goes well and they get an article out of it and you're really pleased, um, the two of you may go off and do lots more wonderful things together in the future. So I guess that's where the public relations bit comes back. Right. Because, you know, uh, these there aren't that many journalists in the world and the, when you talk about architecture, the list gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So you don't want to annoy these people. So if, if something, and often something will happen that is surprising or unfortunate in an article, a, a fact might get printed wrong, or uh, they might publish an image that you wish they hadn't, but you sent it to them anyway as a sort of extra one, <laughs> and it becomes the front page. You know, st stuff happens that upsets you, but if you start raging against these journalists um they're going to remember that and you're going to get reputation for being difficult to work with right so no matter how good a designer you are people may be less inclined to publish your work i think 
you've got to you've got to be friendly and informative uh, and clear. Right. Got it. Very good. And so once the article has been published and it's out there in the sort of public domain, then what? What's the next? How do you how 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 do you operate or manage a, like a campaign of about a single project? So what after your exclusive? Yeah. I mean, I just think send it to all the people uh, you'd like to see it published, and then um, if they say has it been published before, be honest and don't just lie to get it in print <laughs> because people will come find out very quickly. But I think yeah, I think um, share it around. Um, even if people don't publish it, they might remember that you are an architect of great projects. So it's going to help build your reputation amongst them. Uh, and I think, you know, be proud of your publicity. So share it on social media for sure. You might have a news section of your website. Right. Uh, and it's good to put news on there rather than just, um, you know, Jeffrey has baked a cake for the office. <laughs> I'm not sure anyone cares about that. I mean, it does show a nice office culture. Yeah. But what's more interesting is is for a, if a potential client comes across your website and they see that you had four articles on your most recent project, that makes them think this is a this is a practice worth being published about, which means they must be of a certain caliber. It's just a it's just a little uh, a little extra accreditation on top of your uh, design quality. Mm. And so if you're a young practice with small projects or perhaps you haven't got any completed projects yet and maybe you've got a few milestones so you've got a few planning applications under your belt, what kind of things would you suggest that you they could do or to get to get started in building this PR relationships? I think definitely share those stories that you've got with the trade press probably to begin with um, because so the architecture and design uh, and sometimes building titles because any information that you give to them is potentially helpful and therefore they see you as an ally mm. in the whole process. Uh, and you might build a reputation for a particular, without even building anything, a bit like Zaha, you might start to build a reputation for a certain style or a certain, uh, a certain sector. Mm. And I know some small practices have, you know, if they've got the time and resource, have come up with ideas PR, you know, to say uh, perhaps we'll all be living in pods in trees in the future, you know. Um, uh, and again, publications like that approach um, and they like to see it backed up by real projects that you've got in the books um, and it can't hurt to talk to people about what you're doing, essentially. Yeah. But it, it can be a slow burn and um, some people give up and then no one knows about them and they get even more upset. So I think it's definitely worth keeping in there with journalists if you can. Always cultivating those relationships. Definitely, definitely. See them as a conduit to your next client and then maybe you'll feel okay about um, putting in some extra hours at the end of the day. Great. I think we're nearly out of time. I just want to kind of like prep the audience here a little bit for some of the other. So we've talked about project PR and we've touched on a little bit about ideas PR. What other sorts of PR can architects engage with well, to, to kind of push that marketing, you know, to be serving that marketing efforts that they have in their business? I think primarily it's to be seen as an expert. So that might mean sticking your neck out there and commenting on the issues of the day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there's a particular sector you want to work in, then uh, focus on that and become known for doing that before you, and then once you've become an expert in that, you can move on to the next one. But I think if you try to be all things to everyone to begin with, uh, it's going to send out an unclear message. And I think, yeah, mastering one sector at a time is enough. Yep. Um, and then there are things like events and uh, other ways that you can give back to the industry. Um, teaching actually provides uh, can provide a nice bit of PR. And I mean, we could, I mean, I think 
I would need to think about this in more depth, but there are a multitude of different activities out there for architects to um, to get stuck into. But I would advise starting with the projects. Brilliant. Great. And what I'm going to do, if you're cool with this, is actually open up. So if people who are listening to this podcast, they've got questions, email us in, and then hopefully we'll have you back yeah. and be able to answer some of those pressing questions yeah. and kind of see what kind of themes are developing from small young practices and uh, other other architectural practices, what their kind of PR concerns and wants are. For sure. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Rob. Absolute pleasure as always. Thanks for and having uh, me. I look forward to the next one. Cheers. Thank you. So that is a wrap. Thank you for listening. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.